And this is Silverstone and the Motor Star Championship. The Moto British Motor Star Championship. For a hot off pole position goes Joel Irving on the orange red line KTM. But uh, quickly in pursuit on the 125 EPC is Bradley Ray. And he cuts through past number 34, Jordan Weaving. Jason Uribe also in the mix on the Lighten Honda. So we got Joe Irving make clearing off at the front, and then this great battle ensues between Uribe, the 15-year-old American, number 36, against Jordan Weaving, the South African, and also little Taz Taylor on the 125, the lad from Mansfield, storms through into third place. Behind these two, great battle ensues against the, the imposing figure of Bradley Ray, fresh back from that third-place finish in the Motor World. The MotoGP Red Bull rookies, while Jordan Weaving comes under considerable pressure to hold on to second place, a championship winning second place behind Joe Irving in the Moto3 class. And these two keep at it all the way through the race. Taz Taylor has broken clear in third place. The battle for fourth features uh, Joral Bourboum uh, on the yellow bike, number 26, the light, the uh, Suter Honda. He is involved in this huge battle with Jordan Weaving until he crashes out spectacularly and painfully at the loop. And that brings out the red flags. And it means that Bradley, uh, as, uh, Bradley has won and this man has become champion. The Pirelli National 1000 Superstock Championship, Silverstone, terrible start for Lee Jackson, stalls the build-based BMW, thankfully everybody avoids him, and the teenager from Lincoln makes a belated 35th place start. At the front, Danny Buchan bursts from pole position on the Qingdao WK Racing Kawasaki, but Jason O'Halloran on the Honda Racing Fireblade, red, white and blue machine there, has all sorts of people attacking him during the opening lap. Uh, Josie Elliott, number 10, number 53, there is the Jordy Joel Burns, number one, the reigning champion, Hudson Kenner, on his Linksell Trick Motor BMW. And they are fighting for a rostrum place. Jason eventually escapes, and the battle goes down between number 10, Josie Elliott, from uh, the County Fermanagh in Northern Ireland, and South African Hudson Kenner. They battle all the way to the final lap. Uh, Hudson finally pushing his way through ahead of the Northern Irishman. But uh, Jossie's having nothing of it. He tries to stomp his way back through at Aintree, suddenly loses all drive, and Hudson goes through for a clean pass and to clinch that third place. At the front, though, it's victory and the National Superstock Championship of 2014 for the Essex boy, Danny Buchan. Second place for O'Halloran, third place for the departing champion. We have a new champion. Danny Buchan does it for Qingdao Kawasaki. Phenomenal start by Andy Reid on the FFX Yamaha. He rockets off the start to take the lead from second on the grid in the National Superstock 600 Championship. Well, it's not long before uh, he loses that lead. And then a crash for Malachi Mitchell. Thomas fetches down the luckless Ben Godfrey on the beautiful MV Augusta. Uh, that means that there's debris to be cleared from the track. The pace car comes out, and by this stage, five laps complete after 10. Kyle Wright surges off at the front, and once again, he has Andrew Reid for company, as the two who are separated by three points in the championship fight for honours in this race. And a real cut and thrust goes on. Every lap, the changing position, swapping paint, uh, bumping into one another uh, fairly regularly. <laughs> Guy Wright slithers back ahead as they go through Bale into club, sits Andrew Reid up, and as they storm back onto what is uh, the new international start and finish straight, a big move with farm goes wrong for Andy Reid. He goes down on the FFX Yamaha. He can't believe what he's done. The Osterman has crashed out, possibly handed the championship to his rival, but Joe Collier fighting his way through the pack on the B-Wiser Kawasaki number 11 and suddenly finds that the two yellow bikes ahead of him of uh, Kyle Ride and Ross Twyman are coming to a halt. They're running out of fuel and it's the B-Wiser Kawasaki of Joe Collier who wins the race and goes to the top of the championship table. This Hobbs getting a terrific start. Marty Nutt initially leading the way in the Ducati Tri-Options Cup off pole position. Leon Morris stealing second place from his teammate as they went through Cops Corner. And Dennis Hobbs briefly buried in the pack before recovering through into third place. 
past big Darren Fry at the end of the hangar straight. And then he made an early move on teammate Leon Morris on the blue and white machine. Leon Morris nursing a hand injury, not able to hang on to his teammate, and Hobbs took the lead at the end of the first lap, a lead he was never to relinquish, eventually opening out a four-second winning margin. The pace car came up, came out, rather, after an accident uh, that took out Rob Guyver and uh, the lady Nadia shoots from the Netherlands. We hope she's OK. Leon Morris recovered his, uh, his position a bit during the course of the second half of the race. But all the time, Hobbs was leading the way, while Marty Nutt was squabbling for that second place. And shortly coming into the action would be the 848 of number 40, Jonathan Railton. He made an audacious move, got past the reigning champion. Darren Fry was also right in there for content contention for a Rostam finish. But in the end, it was number one, Marty Nutt, who was determined to go out in style as the reigning champion. He stormed back through to second place. But for Dennis Hobbs, for Carl Cox Racing P&H motorcycles, it was victory in the Ducati Tri-Options Cup. The second TriStar RNG Triple Challenge race of the weekend at Silverstone, the last race of a dramatic weekend. And Freddie Pett looking to secure the TriStar RNG Triple Challenge Championship of 2014. And a breakaway group of four includes number 66 Pett, number 17 Tom Kahn, number 11 Scott Pitchers, and number three Phil Atkinson. And these four will break well clear of the rest of the field and just go at it hammer and tongs for the full eight laps. Kahn grabs the lead. Uh, Freddie Pett steals back into second place in front of Scott Pitchers. And all the time, the South African helmet of Phil Atkinson is right on their back wheels. But Khan, who's only had one victory so far this season, way back in early May in Oakland Park, leads the way as Atkinson uh, secures third place at Skull Corner and then makes a move on Freddie Pett of Brooklands and moves through into second place. Freddy Pett has now been pushed back into third place. He needs to do better than that as he thinks about uh, having a goal on the entrance to Maggots, but uh, thinks rather wiser of it. But finally, benefits as Atkinson throws himself wide into Stoke Corner. Pett once again is back into second place, good enough to steal the championship, and Tom Kahn wins the race, but an exultant Freddy Pett has done enough to grab the T-shirt and become the... Our TriStar RNG Triple Challenge champ. An eight-lapper here in the sunshine at Silver Sun is always going to be eventful, but none as much as Chaplo there, stranded at the back of the grid. He was just stuck with a mechanical problem while everyone else got away, and he desperately needed a good start. Meanwhile, nobody at the front cared very much about that because Ben and Tom Birchall were away with it. Sean Hegarty and James Neve knew they had to keep the green and orange driver Wolf BMW behind them. Ricky Stevens, Ryan Charlwood had other ideas and wanted to get in the thick of the action, and indeed they did. Andy Beach and Charlie Richardson, strong from their results, yesterday gave chase as well and pretty much throughout the race the battle raged between Stevens, Hegarty, Peach and Lovelock and it really was anyone's guess as to which one of them would emerge victorious at the end of the day. At the front, the Birchalls at one point were four seconds clear. That was whittled back as this battle just dragged everybody along. Ricky Stevens moving up into second place in the race, showing his class only to suffer a mechanical problem which ruled him out of the overall standard. Such a shame for them. But talented crew will see a lot more of them. The Birchalls then, having set a lap record, took the chequered flag. Hegarty ahead, but the victors, the Birchalls, class act these boys.